Welcome to a new series on the channel, which is about whiskey investment question and answers. Now, what I want you to do, if you've got any subjects or questions that you want me to address, put them in the comments below and we'll make videos about them in the future. This video though, is answering questions all made by one person and we'll put something on the screen now to show you, but they were all left by somebody called James and they were all left on the best investments of 2022 video, which is about the Glenn Farkas 25 year, uh, sorry, Glenn Farkas 25, 30 and 40 year old. And it's fair to say James doesn't agree with my opinion. Now, James took the time to write a very lengthy comment, nearly a thousand word comment. And rather than me trying to write a reply, I thought, well, let's let's do a video about them because he makes some good points. So James, if you're watching, this isn't an affront. This is just me answering your questions instead of writing really long answers to them because you make some very good points. Now, I'm gonna distill out the, the questions that I think James was meaning to ask here. So we'll put the first comment up on the screen or first part of the comment up on the screen. And you can see that he's comparing Springbank's output of seven and a half, uh, sorry, 750,000 liters of alcohol to Glen Farkless's 3.75 million liters of alcohol per year and saying, well, Springbank's better than Glen Farkless because they make less whiskey. So the question there is, does the output size of the distillery matter? Well, McCallum, they've got an output of 15 million litres. So the short answer is no. No one cares about the output size of the distillery. Does it matter? Yeah, I guess it does. You know, I think the quality elements will change. You can't produce 15 million litres of alcohol in the same way that you can produce 750,000 litres of alcohol. The care and attention that Springbank put in is probably greater than that of Macallan. You know, Springbanks is mostly done by hand. Macallans will be mostly mechanized. Now, it's not to say that that's good or bad. It's just that there are differences. But from an investment point of view, come on, who cares? You know, whiskey, collecting whiskey, it's like collecting watches. You don't really care about how well your Patek Philippe keeps the time. And let's go back to the original uses of, of clocks, which is to sort of track your navigation across the ocean because of how precise it was. Irrelevant. Why are you spending so much money on a Patek Philippe? It's because of what that brand and what that status says about you, the wearer of it. So in reality, the physical qualities of the whiskey, does it matter? No. But that said, the whiskies that I recommended, the Glen Farkless 30 and 40 year old, are awesome whiskies. So that point doesn't stand up in several different ways. Now, the next remark that was in this comment was Springbank's bottled at 46 and Glen Farkless is only bottled at 43. So the question here is, well, does the ABV on whiskey matter? No, of course it bloody doesn't. The Macallan 50 year old, which is nearly a hundred thousand pounds at auction, is 38.6% ABV. Legally, by the Scotch Whiskey Association standards of today, it's not even able to be called Scotch whiskey. It's the same with the Balvenie 50 year old. That's another under 40% whiskey. And take Macallan Private Eye, for instance, that's 40% as well. Who cares? The ABV, we're talking about collecting and investing in whiskey here. So the ABV makes no difference. Now, the next part of the comment is about branding and you'll see it on screen now. And I think it's sort of trying to sort of say, how important branding is and Glen Farkless isn't really that much of a brand, so why would you buy it? Well, that really is one of the key reasons why I think it's a good buy, because the Glen Farkless distillery, it's been muddling along the road for a number of years. It's, it's highly respected by drinkers, but it's neither here nor there in terms of like the investment side of things. It's never really had this big marketing push behind it. The reason being is that like Springbank, it's a family owned distillery, it's a family owned business, and they want the, to keep the whiskey for the drinkers. Now, for some reason, Springbank about 18 months, two years ago, the market really got behind it and drove the prices pretty much to infinity, as we'll talk about later on another question. But, Who's to say that can't happen with Glen Farkless? Who's to say that the Glen Farkless distillery won't be bought out at some point and taken over by a big corporation? Stranger things have happened. So yes, the Glen Farkless distillery is in the middle of the road at the moment, but I think that's perfect because it's got all the ingredients for becoming super premium. It's got high age statement whiskies. It's got incredible reserves. It's got awesome whiskey. It's got an awesome visitor center. It's awesome. Now, the next part of this comment comes to a bit of a bone of contention with me. It's saying about how the, how the whiskey, the, the, you know, the Glen Farkless 30 and 40 year olds are still available at retail. 
And yes, they are available at retail still. And so I'm going to sort of take out the, 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 the question here is that can I expect quick returns on this investment or any whiskey investment? No, like if you're going to, if you want quick returns, just go off away from whiskey, go and play with crypto, go and play with something else. And you know, you can make quick returns on whiskey. If you win the ballots on like the Macallan folios or the Macallan distill your world, for instance, you can make huge returns. They sell out instantly. But the bottles that I recommended there, they were core range bottles. If you look at our series of videos that we've done called Core Range Kings, we're looking at core range bottles that have been released and then gone on to prove that they are a fantastic example, like the Macallan 30 Euro Cherry Oak. It was £170, it was a core range bottle, and now it's over £8,000. That's taken 20 years to happen. And most of that growth, if you go and watch that video, happened in the last five years. Now, the interesting thing here is that I think some people come to whiskey investment expecting quick profits and they expect to, everything that they buy to sell out instantly and disappear instantly. That's not the way I approach this. I approach whiskey investment with sort of like a 5, 10, 15 year horizon. Glen Farkas 30 and 40 euro, it's a price at 500 and 1,000 pounds of give or take. And that will be based on their previous sales forecast. You know, how many they were selling and how many stocks they've got. What happens if the whole industry or the whole market goes, we want to buy these? Well, their sales forecasts change and they're all of a sudden, they've sold their quota from, you know, a full year's worth of sales in three months. Oh crap, what are we going to do? We haven't got enough reserves. And actually over the years, the prices will creep up at RRP. The secondary market will keep creep up and catch up with it. So no, don't expect quick returns when buying whiskies like this. But don't come into whiskey investment if you want quick returns. You, you know, only put into whiskey investment what you can afford to lose. Now, this next part of the comment made me laugh because it, it sort of talks about us having a Macallan coronation on the site for £15,000. Well, actually, yes, that was a mistake. It's on at £9,999. So thank you, James, for spotting that. That's brilliant. But he also says, I've got one at 14, you know, I've got one. Uh, will you take it at 14 grand? Because we're selling it at 15 grand. So the question, the distilled part of this is like, why are retail pricing so high? Well, the answer is simple. It's taxes, 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 taxes. If you're a whiskey retailer, let's get a good old VAT calculator out here. Let's say we'll use that 15,000 pound as a price for now. Just, just go with us on this. So 14, well, let's call it 15,000 pounds. Okay, first thing that we're gonna do is subtract the VAT. So we're now down to 12,250. So if, if we bought your bottle at 14,000 pounds, we would be in trouble there. The next tax that you're gonna come off is your corporation tax on your profits. Now, the way that this is gonna be changing, it's 20% at the moment, but it's looking like that's gonna be going up to 25%. So 20% of your profits are wiped out already. Then you put on the cost of marketing, then you put on the cost of insurance and staff and all the other things and all the costs that these YouTube channel things cost to make, they all come into it. So you, it may appear on first instances that many retailers are money grabbing, but by the time you take off VAT, by the time you take off corporation tax and all of the other running costs of a business, most re risky retailers only make a, a fair margin, I would say. We've got that coronation set in stock now at £9,999. If you're outside the UK, we can remove the VAT for you and we can post it to you. If you're inside the UK, you can buy that today and we'll dispatch it via DHL and it will be with you tomorrow. It's more expensive than auction, I know. But there are times that buying at auction isn't necessarily right. You can future price. If you were buying Macallan Jubilees just before the Queen's death at £8,000 at retail, you were silly because we were going for much less than that. But all of a sudden the prices jumped to ten, eleven thousand pounds and I'm gone a minute. We actually did something quite good there. So I bought that coronation set there, full retail, £6,000 it cost me at full retail. We're approaching that as a long game. I love that bottle. I think it's really undervalued, especially when you look at it compared to the Jubilee. But retail pricing has it has that convenience factor in. And if you do want to save all the pennies and pence in the world, go and buy at auction. But sometimes life's too short. And if you want something, you've got to take a position and go and buy it. So the next point that James makes is the fact that we have got a Springbank 21-year-old on the site for about 1,400 pounds. Now, 
that looks expensive because at auction at the moment they're only about 700 pounds but 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 when we listed that bottle and it's not our bottle we're selling it on behalf of a customer the auction price was about 1400 pounds so by the time you would bought that bottle at auction and paid commission and paid shipping and paid premium the bottle that we had on our site even though it was at full retail would have been cheaper than buying it at auction now that bottle has now dropped in value at auction how temporary is that drop are we just seeing a little blip will it double again overnight and will we go back up to 14 1500 pounds we don't know we'll put the bottle on there it's still a fair price if people want to buy it it's there to buy if they don't want to buy it you know what they're just not going to buy it now the next part of this comment was talking about the retail pricing on our site and i think he's just having a dig at his here because he's sort of saying we've got a little faq video on the on the on each product page that talk about the shipping and everything like that and we say that we're the lowest broadly speaking why are our prices so low because we are the lowest price retail for many bottles if you look at this Glen, uh, uh, craig galecki 33 year old we're nearly a thousand pounds cheaper than any other retailer in the uk or worldwide for this bottle so we are the lowest price retailer in the uk now if you want to sell your bottles you know you can put them into auction you can settle for what they're going to sell for at auction or you can bring them to us we can put them on the shop for you we'll charge a higher price to the to the buyer but we're still going to be the lowest price in the uk or worldwide so there's an incentive for you to sell with us because you'll get a higher price and there's an incentive for you to buy with us because we're still going to be the lowest price now there's the extremes of that because you could you know buy at auction and buy much cheaper well that's fine go to auction and buy cheaper but if you want that bottle bought shipped and delivered tomorrow buy at retail and that's why there are whiskey retailers the next part that we go into here really made me chuckle because james starts comparing the price of the glen farkas 40 year old which is about a thousand pounds at retail to the ben romick 40 year old which is two thousand pounds well yeah a thousand pounds more than the glen farkas the balvenny 40 year old which is five thousand pounds well, yeah, it's four thousand pounds more than the Glen Farkless. The Feta Cairn still forty year old. That's three thousand pounds. So yeah, two thousand pounds more than the Glen Farkless. The Kalila Indie bottled Kalila forty year old is fifteen hundred pounds. Well, yeah, that's still five hundred pounds more, and it's an indie bottler. Or the Bonaharban forty year old, which is eighty eight hundred. Uh, sorry, eighteen hundred pounds, which is still eight hundred pounds more than the Glen Farkless yes all of those bottles are still available at retail yes the glen farkless 40 year old is still available at retail for a thousand pounds or so who cares watch our core range king series and all will be explained in there so for the final part of his comment was this well you'll put it i'll put it on screen now I, 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 James, I'm not a clairvoyant. I cannot read the future. I cannot see the future. And nor last time I checked, could anybody in the whole world. With whiskey investment or any investment, you have to look at the fundamental elements that are propping up the valuation of any given product. So when I talked about those Glen Farkless 30 and 40 year olds, I talked about them being very high age statements, which are very uncommon on the market. I think there's it was less than 10 40 year old releases in 2021. I talked about the presentation of them and they're really well presented in those red warehouse door boxes. And yeah, I think they're undervalued by the market. You know, you may not agree with me on this one, James, but I think in the next three to five years, we'll see a big jump in these. And again, we won't talk now about the core range thing because we'll do that in the core range, you know, the, the, the core range king videos. So there we go. There's the first part of our Q and A sessions about whiskey investment. Thank you, James, for giving us such great comments to work with on this one. And we're gonna work with all of your comments next. So put the, your questions or subjects in the comments below and we'll look at making future videos about them.